So my name is Vienna and uh, I work at SideFX and uh, mostly I uh, work with R&D during the dev cycle and um, I have uh, like limited uh, time on certain features and for the past few releases I've been kind of more focused on the environment uh, tool building or environments and building tools um, aspect. So. Uh, I just want to share with you guys some of these uh, additions to Houdini 19.5, and um, let's ride. <laughs> so, uh, can we actually shut the door? So, uh, environment building. Um, here is one such example where uh, just using kind of several several assets uh, to brush upon um, what I'm going to call like base layers. So uh, this ground here and uh, this wooden stool is kind of like the, um, the base layers. And then the other small flowers and the little wooden planks and other weeds around are just kind of the things that were brushed on. And uh, as you can see in the wireframe, the ground is the mega mega scans, um, uh, scanned ground patch, and then just painting a few assets on top can kind of just, you know, uh, change the feel of it. So, um, yeah, USD assets. Um, so for those of you who aren't actually familiar with uh, any of the layout tools in Houdini, uh, and this is the first time you're coming across it, uh, I do want to emphasize that everything that you're going to see here is uh, like USD format. So if you try to bring in some files that you found online, like OBJs or FBX, it's not going to work. Uh, so they must be converted to USD, uh, which is maybe an initial tax upfront. But after you do that uh, conversion, those assets will live with you like to the end of time or until your hard drive dies. Um, and uh, you can just use them whenever on any project later on. So. That's kind of like the, the beauty of this. Uh, you just build up your library and just pull things when you need them. So um, again, for those of you who aren't familiar with um, the making assets in Houdini for uh, doing environments, you can do so by using the uh, component builder, which is kind of a, a set of nodes, like utility nodes, that will allow you to bring these external uh, OBJs or stuff that you find on like um, Polyhaven, for example, uh, so FBX formats, you can bring all those in, even the like rest of Houdini, so any SOP geometry, those all get pulled in into this uh, component geometry uh, node. And you can do any sort of modifications, delete things like you would uh, just in SOPs, and do whatever tweaks you need to uh, grab that asset. And then in the material library, you can create uh, materials that you then assign to that geometry and then you output that in the end and all along the way there are like controls that you use to just write out your asset and it'll write out all the necessary USD files that you need so you don't need to do any extra work aside from probably like um, positioning your asset to you know capture the best thumbnail because you know half a year from now you're not going to remember like what that was so uh, thumbnail is very important, um, but yeah, component builder is what you use to write out your assets with. Uh, and then earlier we saw the stool, the wooden stool, and then the patch of ground. These are the assets that were used to populate uh, that little patch. And you can see that there's not too many. And again, like, you know, if you just keep the mental note, you'll remember these assets later on. So whatever environment you need to dress up, you just pull these files in and paint away. And then these are those uh, base layers, I'm calling them the ground patch and then the, the wooden stool. So uh, we're gonna be talking about those new additions to Houdini 19.5, which are the new brushes. And if you had used any of the layout tools in Houdini 19, you will know that there were already previously existing brushes that allow you to populate uh, quickly and modify your uh, like tons of assets within an environment. Uh, so in addition to those brushes, we added uh, four of them. 
and within each are um, like specific controls that allow you to modify the behavior of that brush. So first we're gonna look at paint. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover the things that I had used that I found most helpful. But of course, depending on the asset that you are gonna be uh, populating your scene with, and also the environment, uh, all of that is like relative, right? So you need to find the ones that work best for you. Um, for me, the scatter method of by size, um, I found that just tweaking like uniform scale, um, that that didn't really like mean anything for me. So if you're like uh, similar to myself, who like doesn't um, doesn't like to read the, the the names and just kind of like a slider mash and figure out like what does what, then uh, maybe this is helpful to just illustrate that you know changing the values will give you these kind of results. So. Something like this initially will give you a first pass to get the little tiny uh, flowers and leaves that uh, you know naturally exist, and then uh, all the other things that grow at a, a faster rate, larger flowers and stuff like that, it gives you a more natural look to your scene. Um, the next brush is the comb, and it's a very simple brush. There's nothing, there's like three settings only, and uh, the beauty of this brush is that it allows you to uh, use the cursor to define the, the rotation direction of uh, wherever you're painting. So if you place a whole bunch of assets that are all in the same orientation, and while there are options to change the orientation and there is an orient brush, the comb just lets you make that little tiny tweak at the end to just rotate it like a little bit and then that gives you that final control and more natural look to break up any sort of uniformity. You just go in there and you, you paint it. Uh, the next brush is the stack. So uh, there's padding options and you can see that it just kind of gives a spacing offset to whatever assets that you're gonna stack. So now if we look at this example, this is those base layers with the ground and the stool. If you throw in a back plate, uh, just for helping to concept your uh, environment, um, you know, change the lights, play with mood, and then start dropping in, like painting your wood stack, uh, wood planks, and the little flowers and weeds. Uh, you can you can just experiment, like many different looks, without any extra tax of just selecting the assets you want to paint and then just painting wherever in the areas that you think are interesting. So it's. Uh, it's a very flexible way of um, concepting. So let's uh, go into Houdini and take a look at how this all works. Um, so I've got the scene, but I think what's best is if I start uh, blank and show you guys. Uh, how many people here are actually like, have used the layout tools before? Okay. Uh, just like cut me if you have some question, um, and I'll, I'll try to explain. Uh, so for making, for using assets, you need the layout asset gallery panel. And this is where you will either create a bunch of assets or load an existing one. And this is what I was referring to for the future proofing of your assets. Um, so you just, uh, let me see. So I had written out all of these uh, little clover leaf things, and if I just show you in here, the component builder, this is the thing that I was showing earlier, where you load in um, you know, all the different files, and these are assets that I found on Polyhaven, which are Creative Commons, and uh, I will upload these converted files, uh, like converted USD assets, so if you wish to try it out yourself, you can. Um, but yeah, I just wrote out each one and then, uh, you know, saved it and created a database file that I can then reference in later. And so going back to my layout, so what I do here is I just, uh, I can either open this window or I can click on the teddy bear and just grab the assets that I want to paint and drop them in my palette and 
um, I don't actually even need this. So the paint one was the one we were looking at. And I'm going to change the scatter to my size and the scale. And then let's just um, see what this looks like. So it's very like uh, dense and we don't actually need uh, that many. Let's see, so it's a few, it's a bit less. Um, if you were wondering how I knew about the keys to modify this, so up in the corner, this HUD, there's a shift F1 to see all the hotkeys, which are highly recommended to use. Um, and if you, once you get familiar with that, you won't need that anymore. So you just shift F1 to turn off. And I'm going to make my assets a bit bigger because I know that they're tiny. So you can see that, uh, you know, I painted a bunch of assets and it's, um, it's as simple as that. So you just load your terrain and you paint on it. And uh, if we want it like slightly bigger, then uh, we can just paint additional ones. And uh, the hotkey, which is C, to let you access quickly all the brushes, uh, you can just, you know, you can see that the comb brush, as I said, it's like really simple, but like gives you really like convenient controls to just make those tweaks. Um, and then for stacking, we are going to, uh, let's, let me just uh, pull up the other, my planks. So you can see, like, like I said, it's super convenient to just make these database files and then just pull up the stuff that you need. So selecting the planks will just indicate like, I only want to use these. Uh, if you don't do that, it will use everything within there. So the stack brush is here and uh, there it is. So you can see that I've just stacked all those wood planks and you're thinking, well, that looks kind of busy um, and needs some padding. So let's just do that so that they don't just sit into each other. And then if you don't even care about that because you think you know that you're going to nudge them over, then it doesn't even matter. Um, but if you want them straight, then there's, uh, we purposefully left these actually with some small values just so that you know that there is that option to uh, change these. But if you know that most of the time you're going to be putting like straight flush things, then you can just uh, zero all of these. And then you can go to this gear icon and say save as permanent defaults rather than having to adjust everything each time, like zero everything each time. So that's that. And then you can see if I just uh, drop this guy and I think I, that this link is not Pick a, let's pick an existing HDRI. Okay, uh, so if we want to actually even isolate this, because now we have a render region, which is uh, <laughs> like much sought in the previous version. So now we have this render region where you can middle mouse button and just uh, render the regions that you want to, uh, you know, define and, and further massage and uh, get the right look. And if you want to just like draw a new one, you just click and draw or middle mouse drag to reposition it, or you can rotate it like, um, like normal and just fit, fit it under the, the region. Uh, you can also, because it resolved too fast, you can't tell, but you can also click on the areas to uh, indicate, I want to like um, have these render, these regions fa render faster. So it will prioritize based on your mouse clicks. And then if you're done with that, then you just hit shift R and go back to wireframe. And that's the, the stack brush, uh, more or less. Um, so what else? We have the line brush. And the line brush is different than the stack because the stack is only dealing with vertical placement only. So for example, if you wanted to have, uh, you know, 
populate your staircases with all of these pillars. You could do it like diagonal or like uh, on an angle or straight, or um, there's actually an option for free. But before we look into that, so these are all of these straight line options. And then if you take a look down here, there's randomizations that will offset everything by a little bit. And again, these are things that you can adjust. So of course, depending on what is your asset, you know, you got to find the values that work for you. Um, this is with nothing and then some spacing and also a uh, piece rotation. And then as I mentioned earlier, the line mode, there's a straight mode and then there's the free form draw along. So it just gives you like many possibilities to have uh, fun and just uh, like decorate your scene. So let's take a look at that. Um, Again, I'm going to just call up the new uh, database file. And let me just grab this one and click this. And I will put the line tool and show you guys uh, my. So, Previously, I had changed the asset scale to giant because the little clover relief things were too tiny. Uh, this is the global scale, so I can just put that back to one. And now, uh, oops, we can just see exactly what you saw in the slide just now with a straight line with a bit of offset. And um, yeah, you can also have the possibility, if you have this edit last stroke enabled, um, it will allow you to make adjustments to your curve, which you may or may not find annoying, uh, because maybe if you had drawn the line and you were happy with it, and then you were ready to proceed to the next one, um, then it will change the, the look of it. So uh, if you don't want that, just disable that. And every stroke you draw will be like done. Um, so yeah, there's uh, all these sort of orientation settings. Um, so again, just depending on your asset, what it is, uh, you find the settings that work for your uh, specific assets. Um, what else was I going to cover? Right, so within line, um, you know, there were already numerous uh, controls, but there's also this pattern option, which if we keep going, I have these uh, set of air ducts, again, from Polyhaven. So uh, I will upload these so that you can just work with converted assets already and start dropping things in your scene. Uh, but you notice that each piece has a number. And those numbers are there for a reason, because they will allow you to specify in what combination you want specifically to place those assets in, which is uh, you know, the complete opposite of the, the random cycling stuff. So here I have these uh, air ducts. Imagine if you had this room and you had to just line the walls with air ducts. Um, you don't want to put each of them down one by one. You don't want to be putting a whole set of them and then deleting them. So if you had a specific order, you could just use the explicit pattern with offset and then um, also assign uh, start and end pieces. And if you didn't, get all of that from the image. Uh, so we're going to look at each one. So the repeat pattern, um, it by default is on cycles. So as I mentioned earlier, if you make a selection in your palette, you will tell Houdini, I only want to use these assets. If you select nothing, it will grab everything in there and it will lay everything down uh, to the maximum that it can because it must fit on the curve that you draw. And so this is like everything altogether in its own order. If you only want to have one item painted along the whole way, then you're thinking, well, I could just, you know, drop in one asset in my palette. But uh, if you want to just freely work, it's best to dump everything into your palette and then pick and choose. So you can either select it or you can explicitly uh, put it here and say like this piece I want to use and have it repeated. Down here, you can see that uh, each uh, piece I've labeled and I've written it down here. 
So this is a specification of like, this is the pattern that I want, repeat it throughout. Um, and then down here is just the same thing with an offset. So uh, that already like gives you uh, like high efficiency to lay down stuff, uh, train tracks, for example, or, or air ducts or anything else in this kind of like mechanical and um, specific uh, way. So uh, on top of that, we have these uh, start and end cap piece options uh, in this ends tab or ends uh, row. And you don't have to use them, of course, but if you know like you want to put a start and end piece, which I put here zero, zero, right? Um, so everything in between with that pattern, you're going to say drop these pieces there. And then uh, if you want to like see how it works with different pieces, then you can see that I've put piece number two and three as a start and end. And because my curve was too short, it just fit the two. But over here on the longer curve, it put the two and the three on the start and end, and then whatever sequence that I had put in here. So um, I don't know about you, but when, when the developer showed me that, I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> this is going to be convenient. So um, I don't know where I am with the time. Uh, I think that I have quite a bit. So uh, actually, how are we on time? I have four minutes left. Oh, OK. Uh, then 11.20, OK. Um, OK, so I think we have time. Yeah. Uh, so 16 minutes, all right. So uh, let me just, I'm going to delete all of these because they, uh, they kind of bother me. So, and I'll just show you the delete brush that it works, you know, quickly. Ta-da! Um, so now we're going to kill this guy, and then we're going to click on the teddy bear and pick on some pieces. And not that one. These two and these. And then I'm going to just drag and drop. Come on. Drag and drop. And then I'm going to uh, close this line and pattern. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think I need to file a bug. So I'll just make a new <laughs> scene view. And uh, where are we? OK, we'll just continue from there. So I have my, my assets and let me just make the initial one. Uh, why did it? Oh, so sometimes you will see these errors. And uh, if you don't give Houdini enough information, it's like, I don't know what to do. So um, we can set this to, to cycle. And you can see that the stuff is getting populated. But of course, the orientation is wrong. So let's find the one that works. And the padding was is too much, so uh, that's that is still not correct. Okay, so now everything is correct. And uh, by the way, we've updated the the indicators per piece. So if those are annoying for you on um, assets that are much smaller, these will occlude everything, and then you don't know what you're looking at. So if you don't want to see them, you just Disable that. Uh, and it looks like I need to file another bug. Uh, oh, no, there, there it is. So it needed to update. So now it's back. Um, sometimes you need to get into the brush state for it to update. So, uh, so where were we? Pattern. Uh, I was in the cycle. And the explicit pattern, if we count, these numbers. So let's say we want, um, let me just clear that. Let's say we want, uh, so 0, 1, 2. So 2, uh, what is that? 3, 4, and then I want 2 again. And you have to put their spaces. 
and then let's do one and let's just see what that looks like. So earlier I mentioned that uh, the editing last stroke, um, it will update your, your brush that you put down, uh, the assets that you place. So if you don't want that, uh, we'll just set that back and or just undo. Okay, so we'll undo and then uh, sometimes you need to actually switch to a brush, which might be annoying, um, but let's continue. Explicit pattern and then, do you guys remember the sequence? Uh, two, I think it was four, two, and one. And then let's do, let's do uh, five. And now you get that pattern, right? And the offset, you can just, uh, you know, move the slider. And if we go down and put start and end pieces, uh, you can see that it set the zero as the start and end. But if we want uh, one and uh, I don't know, let's say four, then then it did it, and the textures have gone. But let's see. I did, um, just in case any of you came across like uh, the textures in the viewport that drop, uh, there's some issue with like the Hydra viewport, um, which is causing this issue and it's a known thing. So just in case everyone, anyone was curious, um, it's a known issue, but it doesn't affect your uh, final render. So it's just like a visualization thing. So uh, yeah, I think, that kind of gives you guys the idea of the, the new brushes and some of the additions like the writing out of, um, writing out of the database files. Uh, important that you save, by the way, because if you go through the hassle of making this many number of assets and uh, you didn't save it, then you're gonna hate yourself. Um, so, Saving and then opening um, like very simple things, but it will uh, help you plan your assets and just organize all your data much more uh, effectively for future use. So I think that is it. So if any of you guys are curious to try this out, go to sideeffects.com slash download and grab the apprentice version. And once we get all of these presentations up, there's gonna be all the associated free files that we can distribute and uh, you can try out some of the USD assets to brush yourself. And uh, that's it. Thanks everyone and I wish you guys a good Sigra. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions? Should I pass? Yeah, okay, just give me a second. I gotta turn this. Uh oh, it was already on. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just had a quick question. So that layout node you dropped is basically its own ecosystem, right? I bring right. assets into that. I should. Yeah. So one thing I remember myself being uh, confused about this. Uh, so very important thing to understand the layout node is an empty, it's an empty node and you load your assets and you paint them and you might think like, oh, I dropped my assets there and I will always have them there. Uh, you can delete them and it won't change anything. It's just like a, uh, a temporary basket, if you will. So um, if it helps, I would suggest to keep the assets that you, uh, you know, populated into it. And then make a new, make a new, uh, make a new layout node so that you can just disable, enable, disable things, and uh, you know where things are. Because if you painted like a hundred different assets, you're not gonna, you're gonna be sorry. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, that's like, um, to build up on that question, Yeah, would it be possible to, let's say I had a two by two grid and I have a layout node just to do the grass and some rocks yeah. and some other stuff. And the, is it possible to consolidate all those layout nodes and export another USD from that? Oh, flatten which, them. Flatten them? Uh, I think that, yeah, you should be able to. I haven't done it myself to tell you how to yet, but yeah. I will, I will look into that because I'm gonna make a few of these quick start videos after. So uh, yeah, I will ask, ask developers and answer your question. All right. Yeah. That was my turn. Cool. Uh, oh yeah, cool. Thank. You. Um, so does this make a point instancer, that like one point instancer with all these? Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's. it's kind of just using existing nodes in Houdini and wrapping it into a, a convenient interface. Yeah, point instancing. Uh, I was gonna ask how simple of a process is it uh, if I build, if I make my own assets in Houdini to convert that into, into USD and then load it up in, into this rather than you know downloading something from. So it's the same. It, it's the same process. Uh, if we go to look at uh, out here, the component builder. Um, this was an FBX, but you can just do file and load in, or um, you know object merged like any of the, any of the sub nodes are in there so it's that's what I was um, like describing that you could modify and delete and assets like however you need um, like you would in in subs yeah <laughs> so would you recommend this is designed for environments? and you know what the whole workflow and stops with copy to points and all of that is this something like you would always recommend doing it this way versus sops for like let's say i'm teaching a class to students like should i be moving all the way in this direction for environments now so i have a answer yeah uh, i can't answer from like a course. studio yeah. point of view but like for myself if i want to uh, do my own stuff like concept things. I, knowing that Karma is in Solaris Lobs world, uh, has to deal with USD. Um, and then I have all these convenient brushes and future brushes that I'm gonna ask R&D to make. Um, like, I wouldn't want to just go the other way and, and put transform nodes and position things. No, definitely not. Like, especially the, the air ducts thing is just, like the start and ends and then specifying the, the order, like, yeah, it gives you really precise control. And uh, hopefully we will get even more options to like, yeah, just manage your, the placement of your assets. It's very convenient. Like, I, I don't know if I'm just sounding like I'm tooting our own horn, but like, yeah, it's, it's super, super handy. And like I said, the, the biggest benefit of all is that Yes, it's a tax that you pay to make your assets, uh, you know, one time, but like forever, like you'll have them. Uh, there's another presentation that's going to happen later today. I think it's the last one by LP. Uh, he's going to cover uh, using PDG to out, like batch output assets. So this is like manual way of doing it. Uh, if you have like a few one-offs, but he's going to do like, you know, just something like that. So, yeah, yeah. Any, anything, like he's gonna show you the, the workflow. Yeah. I guess my question is, is, is there any um, plans to port the same brush tool set into the SOPS context? No. So still using USD pack primitives in SOPS? Yeah. Um, I've just, in my experience, using trying to do environment kind of like layout it's far easier staying in SOPS and leaving Solaris kind of behind 
mm. why you're trying to iterate over um, height maps, um, why you're trying to do content oh, yes. creation and layout, it seems easier to stay in that context than move backwards and forwards between Solar Solaris and Sox. Yeah, so I don't actually have an answer for this. Uh, as you can probably guess, yeah. like we've just finished the, the dev cycle and, and like yeah. already on the next one. Um, I don't know what the plans are as yet. Um, I have a feeling the answer is going to be no, but like I, I really. Yeah, it's just uh, in my experience as well, like using packed um, USD in SOPs is like a step above where like packed primitives were before. Um, and you lose something by staying in SOPs, but you also kind of, you kind of move, you're, you're kind of like focus on creating something as opposed to I can model something and then I can light something and maybe I'll make a change to the model. Um, so it's just kind of like keeping um, like artists focused in what they're doing as opposed to switching Jumping all over the place. The two. Yeah, I mean like for me, maybe because I, I got used to like uh, using the um, I, I got used to using bookmarks between the different places and um, yeah, I understand like preferred workflow that is more comfortable. Um, maybe we can, like, I can take yeah. some notes and give it back, like feedback to R&D and let them know and they can plan something that can like help the situation. Yeah, it's like Solaris is a great, is a great platform to see. It's just, um, I, I still think there's value in kind of like pushing and pulling some ideas around. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, developments. Yeah. Hi, thank hey. you, just a quick question. Along the same notes, uh, you drew the brushes on viewport. Is it possible to drive that procedurally? Like we have another system that outputs a bunch of lines that this will then ingest and lay out stuff. I don't know actually um but i can i can find out i, I think it's possible right yeah like strokes basically thank you okay so if there's no other questions then uh thank you very much for attending and uh i invite you guys to head on over to the other side if you haven't already gotten uh your t-shirt and uh pick it and flip foam toys so thanks